Folks, welcome to the Cord Fabric demonstration. Cord Fabric is an open source leaf spine uh, L3 claw fabric uh, and uh, we are very happy to um, uh, present this at the ONS uh, Solution Showcase. This is collaborative work between uh, ONOS Project and ON Lab and also the ONF at and in, in collaboration with Dell and Inmon. Okay. So very quickly, uh, we all know that in today's telco central offices, um, there, is a, there is a huge uh, a capex and opex issue, and it's not, as it has developed over many years, there is an issue with uh, it being not very agile or very programmable, but very importantly, it does not benefit from commodity hardware. And so uh, the, the design behind Cord is that we take all of those individual pieces of hardware and then move it into one infrastructure. And uh, so you can see that we can leave some things in hardware, such as the VOLT case that you heard about before, but also we can move a lot of functionality into the software and then the backplane that, uh, that connects all of these pieces of software is the leaf spine fabric. So we want to re-architect uh, the central office as uh, a data center and the leaf spine fabric is the backbone of the data center. Um, so this talk is about uh, the fabric itself and what we have shown here is that what we have one physical rack that we have four different racks in it um, where each rack talks to its top of rack switch and then the top of rack switches are all connected to uh, the spines which is in the middle. So this graphical user interface essentially shows uh, the leaf spine fabric um, and uh, from, from the controller's perspective, um, uh, that is the ONOS controller. So we're going to go now to the live uh, graphical user interface uh, of ONOS. And what you see over here is that there are three controller instances that are running, um, that are controlling this, uh, this fabric using SDN and OpenFlow 1.3 with multiple tables, ECMP, and, um, um, and all of those features that are present in uh, OpenFlow 1.3. We're using hardware from, from Dell, so if I, bring, if I click on any one of these um, switches, um, sorry, I, I clicked on a link, but if I click on the switch, in fact, it will show you that we have um, hardware from Dell uh, that is also using OpenFlow uh, 1.3 um, and <clears throat> talking to the controllers. Now, notice that some of this hardware uh, is, is brown and the other ones are blue and that's just telling you which controller instance is the master controller for that uh, switch. What you also see here is that these are the four racks with many servers and VMs in those racks and uh, they're all, um, th there is live traffic going through the network. So this visual is giving you essentially a heat map of uh, uh, the utilization of uh, the network. So you can see that the color changes depending on how much traffic is going through that link. Um, whether it's kilobits per second or megabits per second or gigabits or even up to 10 gigabits per second. Now, uh, these, what's happening over here is that traffic going from one rack to the other rack is going up to the top of the rack switch and then getting hashed out uh, to the spine switches and then coming back down uh, to the other rack. Now, internally, uh, we use a technology called segment routing uh, that is essentially uh, source routing using a stack of labels. And um, the label stack that you impose on traffic completely determines the path that the traffic takes through the network. Um, but this heat map, if you have lesser traffic involved, uh, then basically what it's showing you is that the actual flows going through the network. So if you concentrate between uh, these two racks, what you can see is that there are, there are two flows that are going through this network. One that is going up uh, to that spine and coming down, and the one that is going up to uh, spine 107 and coming down uh, to the same rack. So that's that ECMP that is going on, but we have complete control over um, uh, the paths that uh, this traffic can take through the network. So right now we have left it up to the switch to determine the path because it's doing ECMP hashing on these flows and sending it up to any one of the spines. But you can imagine that if uh, the network operator desired to send a particular flow up to a particular spine, we have complete control to do that. So for example, what we're going to do right now is we're going to take one of these flows okay, and then move it over to a completely different spine. And so, um, Sango, <coughs> 
we're going to send in a command which essentially says uh, that instead of going up to that one, okay, we, we are going to make it uh, move to another um, spine switch just by changing the label assignments that we impose on that traffic uh, at uh, the source switch. This is that source-based segment routing. And as you can see, as now the statistics have caught up. So it take, uh, the statistics are on a polling level and it takes a while for it to uh, actually show what's going on in this network. But now you can see that the flow that was actually going through here has moved over uh, to uh, spine 108. And if we remove this policy, so this is a way to do policy-based routing um, uh, in this network. If I remove the policy, it will go back to doing what it was doing by default, which is uh, just the default hashing that happens uh, in this particular switch. So we've already entered the policy, and again, it takes a while for the statistics to catch up. Um, and so now you can see that uh, that flow has moved back to what it was doing with default hashing. Okay. Um, the other thing uh, that I did want to show is that we have integrated S-Flow into um, uh, this uh, 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 leaf spine fabric. And what that does is, well, we give con complete control to the network operator to determine the policy for traffic to take. But we can also do it in an automated way. And there, is, there are certain benefits for doing things in an automated way because SDN should let uh, you treat your fabric uh, as a system as opposed to a collection of individual boxes that are talking to each other. And so we can use analytics to monitor the health of the system and um, when the system is not behaving optimally, we can directly make changes, in, complete the feedback loop and directly make changes in the system to make it behave better. And essentially that's what we're going to show you um, in, in this particular demo. So what we have over here is that we have two large 10G flows and ordinarily uh, they would go to different spines and that is the good behavior because when it does that, when it does that, you have the throughput that you desire, that is the 20 gigabits uh, per second throughput for these two large 10G flows, the elephant flows if you wish. Okay? But once in a while, the hashing decision results in this kind, of a, uh, this kind of a treatment where in fact both of these 10G flows are trying to take the same uplink to the spine and they are colliding and packets are getting dropped and the throughput is, is now going down instead of the 20 gigabits is going down to the 10 gigabits per second. So that's what you see uh, in both this picture as this picture. If it takes four links, like so, but if it takes, if it takes four links, then it's up here. But if, it, if they, both the flows take the same link up, then it's down to two links and you have a loss of throughput. So in this particular picture, we have turned this button off, which means that we have broken this link. So the analytics engine is understanding which flows are colliding, but it cannot take any direct action because, because this link is broken, okay? And so, what it, so it knows what's going wrong with the network, but it cannot do anything. But now we will complete this feedback loop, okay, by, by, turning, um, by turning on uh, the ability for the S-Flow analyzer, the analytics engine, to be able to use the REST API exposed by the segment routing application on ONOS to make that direct action down into the network to reduce these wells that you see of lost throughput. So if we wait, so right here, so right, uh, okay. So right here you had seen that the S-Flow Analyzer now used the REST API in an automated way to tell ONOS to take direct action so that you no longer, so anytime it detects this collision, it can overcome it by moving one of these flows away. And, and uh, so the resultant is that we no longer see these deep wells of lost throughput uh, in the network. So this is something uh, uh, we are very happy that we have this analytics engine. We've worked closely with Inmon uh, to build it into the leaf spine fabric. Now, one other aspect that I do want to show you uh, is that uh, I, want to, I, want, I want to show you uh, the ability to, to do recovery in this network while using, uh, so we'll start with the control plane recovery. Guys, if you can, uh, <coughs> uh, we're going to quieten down the network so we, it becomes uh, uh, easily uh, visible what exactly we are doing. Are you going to turn these 10 G flows off? Yeah. Okay, so what you're seeing over here is that we're going to turn down one of these controllers. 
And when we do that, the traffic has to uh, be reconfigured. So now you can see that the traffic is still up, okay? But all of these controllers are now pointing to the blue one because the, the, the brown controller instance has disappeared, right? Uh, it has crashed, or it, but we actually took it down. And so uh, now the traffic has recovered and, and, uh, uh, and all of these are now pointing to the master controller, which is the blue controller. So that's, an, uh, that's a demonstration of control plane recovery where we have a cluster of ONOS controllers that are all talking to each other and monitoring the health of each other. And if you take one down, then uh, the switches just fail over to, um, uh, to, the, uh, to the other controllers. Uh, but, and the traffic just keeps going. There's no interruption of this traffic. Now what we're going to show you is a, a data plane failure recovery. So um, what we're going to do here is that you can see these flows coming from uh, switch 101. And what we're going to do is start taking down these links one by one. Uh, and you will see that the ECMP, the default ECMP, just moves the traffic over to, um, uh, to one of the other uh, spine switches. So first, of, what we're going to do is we're going to take out one of these links. Okay, so we just shut down one of these links and, and the flow that you saw going through that link has already been hashed over to one of the other links, but um, we, we also have to wait for the statistics to catch up. So uh, at this point, you will find that the flow has now been moved to, which originally was going up over here, has now been moved to one of the other spines uh, because uh, the hashing now happens over a subset of the ports and the, that's only the ports that are alive. So we're now going to go and move. Uh, we're going to keep doing this uh, and, and, and uh, you will see that ultimately all the flows will move over to the remaining um, uh, link. So here's another port that is it. Okay. okay, so we're going to shut down another one and so the flow that was going through this one, has, as you can see, the statistics have caught up and now we're, it's going up to switch 105. And finally, so we're going to have one more port. Notice that this has about 200 megabits per second, this one has about 200 megabits per second going through it. Uh, once we take down the last remaining, uh, one of the two remaining links, uh, what's going to happen is the both flows will ultimately take uh, the final link uh, that, that it can go through. So we're going to take, remove one more, and what you should see that this flow, as soon as the statistics catch up, you'll see that this uh, flow gets moved over uh, to the remaining uplink, like so. And you can see that the statistics now show that both flows, both 250 megabits flows are now going through the final uplink. Folks, uh, this is called fabric. Uh, in one physical rack, uh, we are actually showing four different racks. Um, so this is rack number one uh, with its servers uh, talking to its top of rack switch. Uh, this is rack number two, uh, number three and number four. So you can see that each rack, the servers in the rack and the VMs in those servers, uh, talk um, to other racks via the top of rack switch and then these four top of rack switch are then connected uh, are, each of them are connected to each of the spine switches which you see in the middle so for packets to go from one rack to another rack the packets go up to the top of rack switch get hashed to any one of the spines and then come back down uh, to the top of rack switch on another uh, rack uh, and what we have up here are uh, two uh, servers that are uh, where we have our controller VMs and also the analytics VM that is doing the S flow monitoring uh, of the traffic uh, going between the leaves and the, and, and the spines. And so um, the analytics VM then talks to the controller VMs and the controller VMs can then take uh, direct action. So that's it folks. Uh, thanks for watching our demonstration of Cord Fabric. <laughs>